There's no place like home. Good morning. Hi. Hi. There we are. <laughs> this is Home Wizards. We love to help improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Strong. And uh, if you are just catching us, this is our new time. This is a great time. You know why? Because listen to my voice. I sound like James Earl Jones. Luscious. Is that? I guess. I, I don't sound like <laughs> that. Not at all. Well, we're on in this uh, new time slot, and, and thanks, you guys, for hanging out with us, because uh, the morning time can really be a big time, and is a big time, to make those lists of uh, projects and things. You well, know? yeah, this is what we love about it. You can wake up, and you can immediately access us at, at yourhomewizards.com, or you can hear us right now on the radio, and then get inspired to actually do something today and tomorrow on your weekend off. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Or if you don't want to do it, you can at least just be thinking about doing it next time. Or you we'll know. tell you who to call. Yeah. Yeah. So... When I was growing up, there was something about butterflies. Uh, I think maybe because my mom really loved butterflies, she would have a lot of little decorative things around the house, butterfly dishes. I think she even had a butterfly dress, something about the butterflies she loved. And so later in life, um, after she passed away, I would always look at butterflies, especially the monarch, and almost feel like that was my mom flying around, like oh, a little angel. Yeah. Yeah. There's something special it's, about the, the butterfly, right? Absolutely beautiful, right? aren't they? Yeah. And so I'm sure that your kids must love them. You know, they do, but I, uh, because of our guest now that is going to show up here in our lovely studio, <laughs> he's brought plants that I simply do not have in my life. So, no, I they're, don't have they're enough pretty, butterflies. They're pretty exotic. So yeah. the thing is, the monarch butterfly is so amazing. The whole Everything about the monarch is incredible, and uh, David Snow knows it, and he specializes not only as a horticulturalist, but he specializes in creating butterfly gardens, and he knows all about the whole process of the butterfly, because right now, we are so lucky in Southern California, the butterfly in all those colder places, even though today's a little cold for us, right. they want to be in Southern California. Well, yeah, they <laughs> I mean, all who doesn't? Well, yeah. They, they've heard about Paris Hilton and all the, you know, the celebrity stuff. Apparently. They frequent the Hollywood sign. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be funny if all of a yeah. sudden all the butterflies were hanging out on the Hollywood side? And there's David Snow. There's David. So yeah. David Snow, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. It's always a pleasure. Good to be back yeah. here, and uh, good to see uh, Cindy and Eric. Uh, always fun. Yeah. So we're, tell us. I mean, is it true that the butterfly, the monarch, always finds the very same tree to come back to when it migrates from the cold weather to here in the warm weather? Yeah. Um, you know, Eric. And, and Cindy, this, that's, that's been known for the migration of the monarchs that are east of the Rockies. Mm -hmm. And they go, say, a monarch that was in Michigan flies all the way back to the forest, 90 miles north of Mexico City. And, uh, that's what they've said. Now, I don't know and about who's the, they? Well, the experts. They're, <laughs> well, you're a, an expert. The well, I, I know, but I haven't chased a monarch through the Midwest, across the border, through Mexico to that forest. Uh oh, I hear a reality show. <laughs> so, I have to say, I am probably more an expert on the West Coast monarch butterflies, but that has kind of been documented that they still can go back and find the same tree. Now, our California monarchs are a little bit more laid back. Oh, so typically, hello, well, Southern California, we're laid I back. Mean, if you're a monarch and you 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 come to life in Malibu, really, where do you go? <laughs> you're there. Yeah, you're, you're not, not leaving. You're not going on a two thousand mile taste. migration. So the reason the West Coast and just kind of difference between the East Coast monarchs in Minnesota, M Michigan, and all the cold areas. I'm talking East Coast, North Ontario, Canada. They have to go down to that forest, or else they're going to die in the freeze. Our butterflies in the Southern California just kind of hug the coast, but the West Coast will get uh, British Columbia, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Northern California, Utah, and those all come into our area right now. So when people say, oh, this, is that, this happens in the spring, in Southern California, it's 12 months out of the year because all the North America butterflies, monarchs, I'm talking mm -hmm. just monarchs, are now and have been for the last two or three months in our Southern California areas, five or ten miles inland from the beach. 
So so then so then by by that scenario occurring, do we have more monarch butterflies anywhere else in the United States at this very time? Absolutely. See, and that's another see, reason to be here. Yeah. They're no, they're yeah. no dummies. These no. guys know the great real yeah. estate yeah, and the good weather. Uh, yeah, and so they do. You know, they come in and they go into Pacific Grove. They do. They come into Pismo Beach. Those are well known areas that people go up to annually, and to see them in the trees and the tree that they're in that most people talk about. And sometimes people think, do they eat the eucalyptus? tree people they do not eat the eucalyptus tree they just nest in that particular variety of tree now and i want to kind of always say this you know the eucalyptus tree is not a native to california we brought it from australia we planted it it with the, the farmers used it for wind blocks wind rows but it adapted well in california so hold, hold, well, hold on i just want to interject something uh, he claimed he wasn't an expert listen to all this information <laughs> this cat's got going on what, what are you talking well what I'm saying he talks is, to the butterflies. You know, He's a butterfly whisperer is what he is. I don't talk to the butterflies. <laughs> but I release a lot of butterflies. Yeah. So, but what I was saying is long before those eucalyptus trees, they were probably in our native sycamore trees. Uh-huh. They just like a tall tree that they can congregate and hang out, and that's do, that's how they do keep warm. They all kind of bundle yeah, together. Yeah, because you see those there. photos, I'm sure you have, on either right. the videos. Or the, it's beautiful. Yeah. Masses and masses of butterflies all in one big cluster. Almost like what? a hive, if uh-huh. you will. Hundreds of them. Oh, yeah. look he's at got that. he has photos. He has plants. He's got so many things. He's a show and tell I'm guy. T- look at that. That's a beautiful. And photo. it's no coincidence that butterflies I, in their orange color gravitate to orange flowers. And that's yeah. a beautiful orange flower. What is that? Kind of like David? a poppy. That or... is the angel trumpet tree. Oh, of course, the angel yeah. trumpet that beautiful. hangs down Absolutely. and has a great little piece for nectar. Yeah. Huh? And t- guess what? what? Looks a little bit like an, or- an angel. It does look like yeah. an angel. Yeah. I took that about <laughs> five days ago. Um, you took that five days oh, ago? Oh, yeah. I, I released. We had five and butterflies where you, that came out. Where was that? That's a, that's my backyard. That's your backyard. I and mean, we were yeah. talking one, two, three, four, at least five so, butterflies. Yeah, we, Monarch. Every morning about 10 o'clock, we've got to open up the, 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 the net or the cage. These are butterflies or these are caterpillars that have gone into a chrysalis and then have come out. And once they're dry, after about three hours, we take them out and we put them on this particular tree. Uh, because it's about six or seven feet tall, and they're probably there for about another half an hour to an hour. Sun comes up by 10 o'clock or 11, they warm up, and they fly away. Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you cool you put them on the tree. You, you physically remove yeah. them from one place and put them in another. Yeah, Eric, if you put your hand into the cage, they will come up onto your finger. I don't know why. They're very friendly, but they you have to kind of lift them out of the cage. You're talking and, about an adult monarch. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about one that just came just, out of its just, crystals. Uh, just a bit. Okay, so yeah. they're still kind of drugged up. <laughs> yeah, I you think know, so. They're kind of high they're, on... Well, but, they're hopped up on Pitocin. But, well, uh, uh, the milkweed. They, they are hopped up on milkweed. They are, they are, so, <laughs> although their milkweed days are over, that's kind of the, the caterpillar stage. Although the monarch is, needs the, the, the milkweed, Asclepius... Uh, from the milkweed family, the monarch is dependent on the, that particular variety of plant to lay their eggs. Mm-hmm. So when they come out, they may fly around for a couple of days. A female can be impregnated after three days. It's pretty quick. Wow. Wow. So after three days, and you'll see in our in our backyard, because we have kind of a lot of monarch butterflies. Jeez. But I got a lot of milkweed in my backyard. It, there should be like a butterfly tour, and everyone comes to your house to see all the action. <laughs> Right? There's, well, there's a lot of action there's going a lot. on. There sounds, because, and, and we do mean action. I mean, that's right. <laughs> the boys are chasing the girls in the backyard. It's like yeah. a uh, cruise line in the Caribbean or something, man. It's fantastic. And, you know, uh, it, the butterfly thing is, all it is, it's a fun thing to have in the garden. It's just a cool it thing. It really is. It's icing on the cake. And so, it, Well, i I got to tell you, too, my kids respond to butterflies like crazy. When they see yeah. one, they go nuts and run around yeah. and try and, you know, have it land on their hand and stuff. Yeah. And Eric, I was texting you and sending the photos. This was back in the summertime when you yeah. brought me the milkweed plant that is the one that uh, that basically is the food and the sustenance yes. for the for the monarch. And we went through the whole process. You gave me a couple of little the little uh, caterpillar guys, and we watched the whole process. They went into the cocoon, but something went wrong. It turned into that bright green and then black, and you, yep. I could see the clear opaque. Yep. Um, Cocoon with the with the monarch Our, wings the inside. What'd, yeah. she, what'd yeah. she do to it? What'd yeah. she do? What did I you know, do? I was talking you know, to it. She'd microwave. You know, Cindy, I I got it. It just dried me. out and didn't in, work. In nature, okay, just in nature. It, and Doesn't this is kind work. of the good side, the bad side. It can be sometimes uh, uh, discouraging when a, a monarch chrysalis doesn't come out 
Yeah. And, and it happens. There's a lot of predators. The fly will lay its egg on a chrysalis. I mean, we had and, it sheltered that, uh, on our yeah. on our balcony, yeah. um, uh, tucked up under an overhang. So yeah. it wasn't just out there. Listen, don't feel bad, little fellow. I, I we'll feel, figure this out. I think out. I need therapy now because I, 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 I killed the darn... But, <laughs> don't, don't, don't be sad. <laughs> we'll get you some more. I almost brought some. And I thought, oh, you know I what? Know. But we'll, we'll, get him. Okay. we'll get Eric some. But what I'd say, too, is... The best, you know, one just advice I could give for someone who's... who's Wait, hold your horses. We're going to get to that advice. We have to take a quick little break, all right? Okay. You're listening to Home Wizards in our new time, 8 to 10 in the morning. We'd love to help improve your home and improve your life. I'm Eric Stromer. And I'm Cindy Dole. We're back in a moment here on KFWB News Talk 980. I'm begging you sweetly. I'm down on my knees. Oh, please, grow for me. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards in our new time, now from 8 to 10 in the That's, morning. It's so much better, isn't you it? You like it? Yeah, you know why? Because we get up early and we get a start on the day. It, we and do. I, and I just and you love on. how your voice sounds yeah, in the morning. And, and 15 cups of coffee later, <laughs> I'm right here and available. Eric Stromer, I'm Cindy Dole. We love to help improve your home and improve your life. And we're talking about the beautiful monarch butterfly, not just in the nature sense, but how to really bring these beautiful creatures to your garden. And this is a passion uh, of our friend David Snow, who's done a lot of the work over the Pasadena Showcase House. And David, it's great to have you back in studio. We're talking about what to do to not only see the migration, because they're leaving those colder parts of the world and coming to Southern California now. They're coming, they're all going to David's yard. But 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 just so the listeners know, yeah. David has released, what are these called, David? They're pods or something. Little, little pods of these, like almost like dandelion floating yeah. things they're all avatar. in the studio. They're, they're it avatar. looks like we're an avatar right now. little avatar magical <laughs> fluff. So what, is, what are these, David? Well, that, that is the seed pod. The seed pod. That is opened up, uh-huh. and it's released the seeds. And the seeds kind of float in the air uh, with the seed, the branch. You can see the seed. You yeah. can. Yeah. So, so let's back right up because people can't see yeah. what we have. Okay. In the studio, we have got the, the magic. You just go. Oh, you're blowing the dead. Oh, yeah. isn't that? And so you, now... know what's, you know what's amazing? One of those landed in my mouth, and it tastes like chicken. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, you're going to basically cough up a butterfly is no, what you're going to do. <laughs> so, uh, so what we have, this plant is known as the milkweed. Yeah. And if you don't know, the milkweed is the only plant that the monarch will eat, yeah. right? The host plant. The host plant uh, for the now, caterpillar. Now, you can see, I'm going to say it's the monarch won't eat the mil- the monarch caterpillar. Cater- caterpillar, yeah, excuse to, me. That's where eat. that's where the yes. babies come from, yes. basically. Yes. And this is a new variety. It's known as the milkwood tree. But describe. Yeah. I mean, it has little puffy balls. Yes. That um, look like. Hey, take it easy. <laughs> yes, I, I know it's a crazy tree. And 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 the story was, um, I got a call from my mother-in-law, who said she on her walk she she saw a plant that all these monarch butterflies were around, and she described it to me. And she said, well, it's got these kind of r- round balls on them. And I said, you know, to your typical kind of mother, uh, no, you know, that's not a milkweed. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not. But next time I come down to visit, I'll walk down the street and I'll take a look. And so your I mom never found this, huh? My mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law. And so, you know, it, it was kind of we laughed about it. So I, I couldn't wait to go down. Let's go visit my in-laws, you know, and uh, walk down the street. We're in Mar Vista. And uh, I go around the corner. And I pinch it because, you know, milkweed, if you pitch the stem, it has the kind of milky substance. And the leaves out. look very much Wait, like oleander. Wait, let, let me see that, David. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get that to you. And, uh, yeah. But yeah. wouldn't you say the leaves, David, look yeah. like oleander to you? They're that kind of a that yes. look. Yeah. And it kind of had it. So, anyway, I went up to it. and oh, he's, uh, he's rubbing the leaves. Hold on, hold on. Listen, the, listen. And, that's the sound of milkweed. Right <laughs> and here the monarchs were around it. And so I grabbed some of the seed pods, which are these round balls. And I brought them. This is last year at this time. To your home. And now and you've to, got and a we, and we, forest. And we grew them. And we probably had about 100 this year. Wow. And uh, they grow up to 8 feet tall. It's called a milkweed tree. It's a Sclepia psychocarpa. And it has various nicknames. See, there he goes, showing names. off again. Yeah, I know. He's Latin. called botanical on He does on that us. crazy Latin oh. business. <laughs> Asclepius was even a hard word to pronounce for for a long time when we first found out about it. I just said milkweed because I called it about everything wrong. Right. But, you know, well, you say, it, say, say it again. What he is it, Asclepia? He was saying it's the family uh, jewel uh, tree yeah. is what he was calling it. Yes. Well, yeah, he was. And, well, the common names are fun because in the common names, you can kind of make up your own. Uh, you know, people will call Agapanthus lily of the Nile. And I've changed the common name for Agapanthus to Lily of the Snails. 
Oh, oh yeah. Which is way better. It, yeah, it tells exactly. you exactly it what happens. Them, because that's what happens. Right. All the snails come there. So and, yeah. when you have a common, now the, the botanical fellows at the universities want you to go with Latin names. And, and, and the reason it's a Latin name is because it'll be a Latin name here in California as well as the East Coast, as well as Italy and everything else, because that's the way they, they know. But the you know what? Words. It's so foo 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 foo. We, we, sure like, we like the common names. Yeah. Don't you well, think? It, yeah. to, to, the, to the ladies in Lat- the, Latin to me is yeah. not the language of love. Yes. yes. No. no. But it's I w- Greek to you. I will That's say <laughs> to our avid gardeners that are out there, and I've said this many times before, forget about all having to call the, all the, the botanical names. And I tell this to and you don't have to know every fish in the ocean to swim in the sea. It's all about planting and getting to know them, and the names will come later. So talk about the milkwood yeah. tree, because we want yeah. to get well, one. Wait, wait, I was just overcome with his philosophy and, <laughs> and almost had to take a beat, because I was like, wow. You this, don't have to this know. This dude goes don't, deep. Yeah. Don't yeah. get caught up. Just We're not knowing it's a slippy psychocarpus, but the common name we prefer. The milkwood tree. The milkwood tree. Milkweed tree. Milkweed tree. Can we buy this anywhere? Um it's hard to find, and that's really why. Go to my Facebook, David Snow Garden Design, and you can see many, many pictures of it. And all I can always arrange where you could buy it. And, from, and David, the seed. other thing, too, just looking at the plant, it's a beautiful plant. If it were to be a screen, because mm-hmm. it goes eight feet tall, it would be an absolutely beautiful wall of, of greenery. It almost has it? a bamboo effect, too. The leaves yes. have that look. If it you really all, does. And how tall does it grow? Eight feet tall. Eight, eight feet, feet tall. Yeah. And is it is it thirsty? Is it a drought tolerant? It's no, somewhat th- drought tolerant. It's actually kind of frost tender, too, because we've had other Asclepias, the Asclepias tuberosa, that's commonly sold in and around Southern California. California, that that's a little frost tender, but this this one just does this does great. And, and two, Cindy and Eric, the the reason we like this plant, and for the for the people that are in kind of raising butterflies, it grows eight feet tall and it has a ton of leaves. Because on it. you know those those caterpillars, and they start absolutely. munching on those leaves. Yeah, Eric, when we when we yeah. were trying to have a well, we were trying to have a baby, basically. So <laughs> we're trying to have when, a monarch. I'm so sorry about I your know, loss. I know, I know. And yeah. the caterpillar, it eats, it devours the entire bush. It does. So it would be hard <laughs> so to sorry have for your loss. <laughs> so when you have a little shrub, I mean that that's the beauty of the milkweed is because the people will buy two or three and then they'll call you on the phone and say I'm, they ate I those. Need I need two or three more. So and, the tree yeah. will last and it, it'll. It'll Absolutely. feed a number of caterpillars. Yes. So, I mean, so these are not sold in nurseries, really, are not, they? Not the milkweed tree. So but. you're basically like the you're the you're the connection. You're like the drug lord of this. Hey, hey I want you to know I've got thing. his cell phone number. I'm in. <laughs> Eric, they've said I'm the king of milkweed. Yeah, baby doll. And when I work, I do a lot with my son. And, and, and my son said, "Well, Dad, if you're the king of milkweed, I must be the prince of milkweed." Well, and speaking of your kid, talk about how this is a great family project for those who are listening who want to bring butterflies, monarch butterflies, to their yard. I mean, what a it, great it, experience! It is. We, we go into a lot of the elementary schools. Zoom in Malibu. We did Ladera Elementary in Thousand Oaks. And we've done just little butterfly habitats. And it's very simple. We're, we're going to do a workshop uh, at Ascension Lutheran a preschool in Thousand Oaks, too. And they're going to invite all the families, and we're just going to show them how to, to build these butterfly habitats. So the kids love them. My, we have, we have the dandelion does. stuff flying I, through the I studio. Think, hold on. I think I just inhaled one of these things. <laughs> From the milkweed tree. <laughs> so, I, you know, if you want to say my kids, my kids definitely know about the milkweed. They love Isn't that great? They love growing it. I think probably my daughter would probably say I've had enough of the milkweed at times. Right. And, uh, well, you have a great T-shirt. In fact, are you wearing it today that says Got Milkweed? He's uh, wearing it. I always oh, wear he it. So, he's the best. I love uh, this guy. Now, we only have a couple minutes left. Talk about this other really funky-looking plant that probably has nothing to do with butterflies, no. but it is is gorgeous. These purple flowers. Well, how would you describe that purple, Eric? I mean, it it's, is. It's almost like a star of purple flowers jutting out of the center of it, and then beautiful greenery. And that... the shade of purple. It's not purple purple. It's almost like part magenta and part blue purple combined. Well, you want to know what it's called? What's it called? Sonetti. It's called a Sonetti. Right? Is that it, David? Yep, that's it. And, uh, you know, Cindy, when you say this may not have something to do with um, butterflies, it actually does because purple and yellow are, oh, are they known attract, to attract. They attract them. So with... there's always two kind of plants. You're, you're either attracting the butterflies into the area, into your garden, um, and then once they come down to see all the, the nectar then you got to have plants. the milkweed for the, for the babies yes. to start happening. So you have all these nectar-type plants, which are hibiscus, honeysuckles, and all these that already the hummingbird, even the, uh, the hot-lipped salvia oh, that yeah. you see, 
I mean, that's a magnet to the hummingbird, but it's also a magnet to the butterflies, too. So Sanetti was what we kind of brought out at last year's Pasadena Showcase and, and many of the people that came to visit. And it says it's full sun yeah. to part yes. shade. Yes. Indoors and outdoors? Indoors, indoors. And outdoors. So yes. this is another hardy plant. This is a hardy plant. And I, it's and it's evergreen. We love that it's evergreen. Okay, wait. Let, let me interject here. So so the milkweed attracts for the feeding. The other the Sanetti attracts for the visual aspect. They're attracted yeah, to the, the color. Yeah, adult, the adult yeah. butterflies yeah. will just keep coming. Back. But okay. the milkweed is for the yeah. caterpillars to, to produce. And most people's gardens already have plants that attract you know, hummingbirds right. and that. So it, it just the addition of milkweed, just like everyone in the last 50 years has put a lemon tree in their backyard. Now, regular milkweed you can find at the big box stores. Oh, I've seen it. Um, you can find probably it. Probably maybe not the big box stores. But Some of the, the more specialty the, nurseries. Um, the Armstrong's nurseries. Okay. Yes, they, they, David Snow, what's your website real quick? It's uh, D Snow Garden Design. Com. Awesome. Yeah. Great having you. Thanks for bringing in your butterfly goodness. Hey, I'll meet you tonight for that milkweed <laughs> exchange. You hear me? i got to pick up When we truck. come back, talking about uh, the Sinetti, we're going to talk about the hot colors for 2012. There's a lot of them, too. And then we're going to walk you through the color wheel. What the heck is the color wheel, and why do you need to figure it out for the Well, colors? we're going to tell you why. It's amazing, this All thing. All right. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, and our new time here, Saturday mornings, 8 to 10, Home Wizards to improve your home and improve your life. We're back in the flash on KFWB News Talk 980.